This woman <laughs> survived one of the most incredible things. She went skydiving, okay? Dislocated her shoulder in mid-air. It's an amazing story. Well, here with Synergy Wellness in New York City, we have Sylvia here who is a culinary trained chef. Is that correct? She's a culinary trained chef and she has worked for some pretty famous people and she can't work anymore because when she's cooking and uh, it, her back hurts. So she has double legged sciatica. Yes, sciatica down the left and the right leg. Uh, we have been managing it. She obviously has a disc herniation, but what complicates her condition a little bit more is S shaped scoliosis. Yes, S-shaped scoliosis creates musculoskeletal imbalances in the spine and the rest of the body and makes you more susceptible to bulge or herniated disc because instead of your vertebra stacking straight up on top of each other, they're, they're curved. So the discs are in between the vertebra. So one end, it may squeeze over here on this side and push the disc out to the opposite side. So... Um, I could show you on a graphic what that looks like, where the disc tilts to the side and bulges or pushes the disc out. And that could be pushed backwards to the side, on, laying onto the sciatic nerve. Um, but that's what's going on here with Sylvia. She's allowed us to um, show all of you uh, what she does for her sciatica. Um, so take a look. Again, she has a double uh, or an S-shaped uh, scoliosis curve with the lower, bar, lower back curve on the right side and the upper curve on the left side in the uh, thoracic region up here. So at her age, we're probably, and she's young, but um, you know, once you're into your late 30s and 40s, it's much more difficult to straighten scoliosis out. Um, We've given her some stretches and exercises to do, but right now, today, what we're going to focus on is just loosening up the QL muscles. QL stands for quadratus lumborum. It's a tongue twister, but that muscle is chronically tight on people that have sciatica or those with scoliosis. So we're just going to loosen that up, and that's tender. Am I right? Okay, take a deep breath in and blow out. And Sylvia, before you tried chiropractic, um, what did you do for your sciatica? Uh, basically nothing, exercises, but it didn't work. Mm -hmm. Some acupuncture, but um, you are the really one who fix it. It makes me feel better. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, so she has done acupuncture, and acupuncture can also help. Um, you know, I'm not an acupuncturist. Sometimes we get patients that come in here and ask me questions about acupuncture, and I, I really, I'm not the one to ask that. An acupuncturist is, to, you know, the person to ask those questions. But as far as I know, it balances your chi, um, which is your energy. But um, more importantly, it can help to reduce muscle spasms along with several different physical therapy and chiropractic techniques. But I will say this, oftentimes medical doctors send patients with sciatica to physical therapy. <clears throat> I'm sorry, but that is not the right referral. I'm not saying a physical therapist can't help with sciatica. In some cases, they will. For example, if it's from piriformis syndrome, this muscle here pinching that sciatic nerve, which is only a small percentage of sciatica cases. So if it's piriformis syndrome causing the sciatica, then PT is definitely a, a fine move and you can do that and they'll be able to help you just fine. But if it's coming from a disc injury or a spinal injury, a chiropractor is better equipped. And there may be PTs watching this. Feel free to chime in. I'd be happy to make that argument with you any day of the week. Chiropractors specialize in the spine and they're the only ones that can take the pressure off the sciatic nerve from or at the source, the spinal level. 
And on top of that, chiropractors can do all the physical therapy modalities in most states. In my state, New York, we have to take the PT or physical therapy national boards because we, we perform physical therapy and soft tissue techniques and we bill for them to insurance companies. So uh, we're required to know what we're doing. <laughs> Some states, not too many though, there's only a few states that don't allow chiropractors to do muscle work and soft tissue work, but again, very few states, and I'm not sure what those states are. Um, you can certainly ask your local chiropractor if, you're, if you think you're in one of those states. Um, how are you feeling there? It's painful, but... Okay. I mean, good pain? Yeah, good pain. Yeah. And deep breath in and out. So I do, it's hard to show you guys from here, but I do a pin and stretch um, similar to ART, but while she's laying down on the table and there's no active movement. Because ART is the patient's actively moving and the doctor or practitioner's pinning and stretching that muscle. Um, I'm doing it a little differently here while I have her laying down. We just put her on spinal decompression for 12 minutes. So that's also something really important you should try. If you have a disc herniation or sciatica, definitely try uh, spinal decompression if you haven't already. But what we do is we do spinal decompression first, then we get into the muscles, and then do cox flexion distraction technique, and we get great results with all of that mixed together. And how do you feel here? Tender? Yes. Yeah. And take a deep breath in and blow out and depending on how severe the sciatica is or the disc herniation um, you know it these injuries sciatica can take two to three months to get over we've had some cases get better in one visit um, every case is different and just because your case didn't get better after five treatments doesn't mean the doctor did anything wrong it just means that you're going to be a little bit slower to progress that's all and of the all the people that get sciatica, only 2% end up requiring surgery. Okay, well, we're gonna do a little ART on her now. So I'm gonna have you lay on your, on this side. Right. Yep, face that way. Then we'll let you smile and say hello to everybody on the other side, okay? <laughs> okay. So um, you know what to do here, right? I'm gonna have you bring your leg back against my hip and then reach for that garbage can down there. Okay, good. Good. So Sylvia, actually we had her in another video. This woman <laughs> survived one of the most incredible things. She went skydiving, okay? dislocated her shoulder in mid-air. It's an amazing story. And that's when I think she first came to me for that shoulder neck injury. Um, anyway, so she dislocated her shoulder in mid-air because the camera guy thought he would be cool and come in towards her while they're up in the air at 15,000 feet and put his hands on her shoulder, but he came in too fast and poof, dislocated her shoulder so can you imagine she hadn't pulled her chute yet, her parachute, so she couldn't even raise her arm once she did pull the chute. Was the pulley on the same side? Or were no, you... the, the guy had to pull my feet and pull the parachute for me. So he had to pull the parachute for her in the first place. She couldn't even pull the parachute to get it open. But then for any of you that have skydived, and for those of you that haven't, I've done it and I, I have a video of it. Of course, I do videos of everything. Check out my uh, video, it's called Skydiving Chiropractor. But that being said, she, it was in midair and then you had to raise your arm up through the rings, right? Yes. Through the, through the uh, whatever you call them, the stirrups where you put your hands in to, to guide the uh, parachute. And he had to help her and raise her arm up to, to put it in through the ring. And so she had the ring up into her armpit while she was pulling with the good shoulder. Luckily she, she landed okay. Incredible story. Um, Thank God it turned out okay. It could have easily, yeah, you could have easily died very easily. Other side up. When I 
first came, I had pain in my whole body. Yeah, but I remember you telling me that story on the history, and I was just shocked at that. Okay, same thing, yep. Reach for your, your toes for your purse there. There we go. Good. So what I'm doing is loosening up her piriformis muscle, just in case that piriformis is involved. I'm also loosening up her glutes using ART, or active release technique. Okay, lay on your stomach. And now we're gonna do a little cox flexion distraction technique. And this is really the most powerful technique. And I know a lot of people have sciatica and they said, oh, I went to a chiropractor and he made it worse or it never got better or, or I see this a lot. Uh, I went into the chiropractor with sciatica and he herniated my disc. I'm sorry, it's impossible. Uh, especially if you went in there with sciatica, you already had the herniated disc. You just didn't have an MRI to show it and prove it. So uh, give it a chance. If you've only been a few times, give it a chance. It takes time to get over a disc injury, three months on average. So if you expect it to go away in, th in three visits or a week or two, it's, it's not always the case. You have to give it at least a month to five weeks and you should see at least 25 to 50% improvement. If you're seeing at least 25% improvement in four weeks, then keep at it. And that's in usually a more severe case. Oftentimes they don't take that long to get over, especially if the Cairo knows what he's doing. All right. How we doing there? Okay. So as you guys all know, cooking, she's a chef, you know, it, you know, you're, you're bent over that counter a lot and creates a lot of stiffness in the neck. It's like looking down at your cell phone all day. Uh, and then on top of that, some of those counters are a little bit short. So you end up having to bend a little bit. So it's actually pretty physically demanding um, on the arms, the hands, and the back. So one thing I recommend, um, Sylvia, is getting a soft mat that you can work on or asking the owner, you know, the, the kitchen that, where you work at to get a mat that you can put there and stand on. And that can help a little bit. Also, you know, making sure if you're flat-footed that you have good orthotics, right? And comfortable shoes on. And you can see, folks, this motion is very, very gentle. Um, when you have sciatica putting you on your side, yeah, that typically works and it's effective, but it's not the best technique, uh, especially if you're thinking there's a disc injury there. So any pain down the legs right now? No, before on the left side. Okay. Nothing now, though? No. Okay. Okay. Take a deep breath in, bend your knees, and blow all the way out. And again, deep breath in, and blow all the way out. Good. Relax here. So if you'll notice, folks, I'm standing on the right side of her body because her curve down here is on to the right. So I don't want to stand on the left and just push that spine further to the right and irritate that scoliosis any more than it already is. Um, right up here, it starts to turn to the left. So we're going to shift to her left side. Take a deep breath in for me. Good. And blow out. And again, deep breath in. All right. Now, we're going to do a little ART on her QL muscle. Remember the quadratus lumborum muscle? We're going to go show you how we do um, <laughs> ART on that. So, Sylvia, I'm going to have you sit right here. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to have you cross your arms in front of you. And I'm going to have you lean to the left, come up to neutral position, and then bring your shoulder forward in that direction. Okay? So, folks, uh, take a look at what we do. We're going to pin... Yep, that QL, good. And up to neutral and left shoulder forward. 
Good. And back and tilt. Yep. Neutral. Left shoulder forward. This is a really great stretch. Make sure you grab higher and get a tissue pull. What I mean by that is hold up there. Watch, guys. So come up to neutral. So you want to grab right up here, a couple vertebra up. Get the thumb and pull down. No, no, no. Come up to neutral. Uh, and I'm going to pull down like this. And then I'm going to have her laterally bend to this side, to the same side. Yep. And then come up to neutral. Well, I still have it pinned. And then bring that left shoulder forward. There you go. You feel that stretch? Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to do it again. Pin and stretch to the left. Yep. And up to neutral and left shoulder forward. Good. And again, lateral bend. Good. Good. And we can do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to have you scoot to the, uh, actually, I'm going to have you stand up. I'm going to flip the chair around. I felt it very much. Yeah. This is a great um, ART move for quadratus lumborum. All right. Now we're going to do this side. Okay, you're gonna just laterally bend to this side. Yep. Bring that right shoulder forward. Good. And again. Good, and you see here I'm using the pad of my thumb. It tends to be the most effective and can get a lot of leverage and also um, comfortable, more comfortable for the patient. So go ahead and lay on your back here. Any headaches? Uh, two days ago, yeah. Okay. Relax here. See your hands up. All right. You are all set. Yay, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> thank you. Oh, all right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. If you guys have any questions or comments, comment below. Yay.